Hello boys and girls, this is Mr. O and you are most welcome to my channel where we look at the best, the worst, the silliest and the grossest board games in the world and sometimes learn something too. Today I'm looking at Wallace and Gromit games. You remember Wallace and Gromit, right? No cheese, Mr. O. Go to the shop and get some. Not a bit in the house. Yeah, just go out. It's not that late. The corner shop will be open. Dude, what are you doing? Just get some more. Don't eat dry crackers. We could go to the moon. Everybody knows the moon's made of cheese. Dude, bro, what are you talking about? It's not made of cheese, it's made of rock. Plus you need a rocket to get up there. And by the time you've made that, you may as well have gone down to the supermarket. What are you thinking? This is Going Crackers, a family board game for two to six players that takes about 30 minutes to play. Players Wallace, Gromit, Wendelin, Preston, Sean and Feathers McGraw, yeah really, you'll change character throughout the game and complete challenges to win the most points before the rocket launches. Set up the board and cards like this, then roll the die to choose a character. They're numbered one to six. You have a mover to go around the board, but your character will change frequently. Oh, what's this? Hm. Okay, I'll give you eight seconds to like and subscribe. Ready? Right, so roll the die to move your uh, mover, except if you roll a six, in which case you move the rocket marker one stop along the track. The game ends when it reaches the rocket or when the cheesy dip cards run out. The player with the most points wins. You get points from completing challenges on the cheesy dip cards, such as singing, acting, naming, listing, collecting things, and so on. The back of each card shows how many points you get if you successfully complete the challenge within 30 seconds. So for example, I might have to run around and collect four red things before the timer runs out, or sing a song, or list 10 cheeses, things like that. Landing on other spaces will allow you to steal cards, change your character, miss a turn, and so on. This all sounds fairly typical, right? Well, there's more because you have to do these challenges whilst acting as your character. So as Wallace, for example, you need to hold your mouth like this. As Preston, you should bark and snarl like a dog. And as Gromit, you have to remain completely silent, although he is allowed to write things down. This means some challenges like singing are impossible while you are Gromit, Preston, Sean, or Feathers. This is why it's important to change characters frequently. If you cannot or do not complete a challenge, you must discard that cheesy dip card and you don't get the points. There are two special cards, but be careful of these as they carry minus points at the end of the game. I think as a party game, this could be quite fun. If you had six people and they all knew the rules quite well and they were all up for speaking with their fingers in their mouths or making dog sounds, this is probably a very funny and active game to play. Six people would also mean that changing character affects two people each time rather than just one. I don't really like the artwork. I'm not sure why, but when Wallace and Gromit was first popular, they never used the actual models from the short films. Everything was done as drawings instead, and for me, they look a bit weird and creepy. I feel kind of the same about Sesame Street puppets when they are drawn. It's just kind of wrong. And it goes the other way too. Look at what happens when 2D shows become 3D toys, like The Simpsons or Peppa Pig. That's really creepy. Anyway, aside from this, it feels like there's a bit too much to do in this game. On a single turn, as well as rolling a die and moving, you have to complete a challenge with a timer whilst also acting as your character. Or you'll have to change character and do everything differently. And then maybe you can't do the challenge because your character doesn't talk. I appreciate that they tried to make this more than just snakes and ladders, but 
Honestly, it gets a bit tiring. When the box is really massive and mostly empty. Just look at this. At 26 years old, this game is a bit of an antique. You can find it on eBay, but I'd only recommend it for Wallace and Gromit completists. This is Rocket Race, a family board game for two to eight players that takes about 30 minutes to play. Launch yourself into a full-on space race with this hilarious family game. Move around the board and collect your rocket pieces to build a spaceship that will blast you to the moon in time for tea. Just don't forget the crackers for all that cheese. Open the board, shuffle the chance cards, and lay out the rocket pieces according to their numbers. You will collect them in the order eight to one, just like a rocket launch countdown, except that a rocket launch starts at 10, not eight, 10. Everybody knows that. Anyway, choose a playing piece. You can be Wallace or Gromit or Wallace. Well, basically those two in different colors, but not very different colors, no. In fact, they seem to have chosen at least three variations of greeny gray. And the light pink and light orange are really close too. Now I realized that they needed eight colors and that red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple is just six. But what about black and white? That makes eight. Why did they need to have these colors? I tested the game with four players and we were constantly making mistakes with the pieces because the colors are so close. What were they thinking? Place your playing piece on the launch pad, which helpfully is the same color, although it says toolkit rather than launch pad, just to confuse you. Roll to move your playing piece out of home and clockwise around the board. You need to visit each of the part stations, collecting a rocket piece each time until you have assembled your rocket and you can return home to win the game. By the way, it's not obvious at all which bit is the part station and which is the launch pad. You can get the idea from the back of the box, but really they could have just labeled them on the board. The rules state that you don't need to enter the part station by exact count. So if I want to go into here and I roll a six, I can just stop when I arrive. This is good because otherwise the game would go on forever. There are two other kinds of squares. Chance, where you take a chance card and there are things like miss a turn or move ahead extra spaces. And by the way, surely they should have called them perchance cards. Perchance? The other spaces are steel, where you can take the lowest numbered rocket part from another player and only if that's the part you need next. It's not clear what you should do if you don't need anyone else's rocket part. Yeah, it's a weird rule. The rockets go together like this and they're a bit tricky and look a bit weird when they're finished, but there you are. Building a rocket is a nice idea, and it's good that you get eight of them. Half of mine are still in the punch cards. It's good that they use the real Wallace and Gromit photos instead of creepy drawings too. I had really high hopes for this game. It looks cool and you get to build a rocket and steal bits from other players. But honestly, this game is a bit of a mess. Firstly, whoever starts here has a massive advantage because they can go straight in and collect the eight piece and then move around very easily. Provided nobody steals from you, you could win the game in less than 10 moves. That's crazy. The person who starts here has to go all the way around the board before they even get their first piece. They even acknowledge this in the rule book. The player who takes the light blue launch pad actually the light pink launch pad, must do a circuit of the board before collecting the first part of their rocket. They cannot leave their launch pad and move straight into the number eight part station. So they knew it was a problem. The other problem is that there's only one square in and out of the part stations. So at any time you can easily forget whether you were going in or coming out. They went to the trouble of labeling some parts of the route. Why not all of it? Finally, the rocket. What on earth is this? It looks nothing like the rocket in the film. You know what I think? I think they designed this bit and somebody said, oh no, four pieces isn't enough. They'll finish too quickly. Give it eight pieces and keep the little tykes busy. 
So then some poor designer had to try and add this bit on top. That's why it's so hard to put together and why it looks so weird. But look, I don't want to criticize this game without giving some suggestions. So here's what I've got. Reverse the order of the part stations. That gets rid of the advantage for this player. Label the part stations and launch pads so you actually know what's what. Cut this space in two and label it with in and out arrows so you actually know where you are. Change the colours of the pieces, that should be obvious why. Change the chance cards to perchance because that's the kind of witty little easter egg that Wallace and Gromit is known for. Clarify the steal rule so that you can take anyone's lowest numbered part and discard it or keep it if it's the part you need next. Finally, I would add a rule from Ludo where if you land on someone else, you send them back to their launch pad. This would be cool because it might be annoying for someone, but it might also be good for them if it puts them near where they need to go next. <sighs> no, unless you're going to change it, as I just said, or you're a Wallace and Gromit completist. I've got two more Wallace and Gromit games to show you next time, and spoiler, at least one of them is pretty good. Mums, dads, grown-ups and teachers, head over to my second channel where I have suggestions for playing these games and similar ones at home and in the classroom. You lot, watch the outtakes and tell me in the comments who is your favourite out of Wallace, Gromit and Sean. Keep on gaming. Dude bro, it's made of rock. What do you... It's made of rock. You'll need a rocket. Dude bro, what are you talking about? What is it? Dude bro, dude bro, dude bro, dude bro, it's plus the time it makes... Dude bro, dude bro, what are you talking about? What are you thinking?